Oh, it's so nice to see you, lovely people. Good afternoon. Nice to have you. Oh, why don't you have a seat? Uh, would you like some wine or some whiskey? Oh, where are my manners? I have forgotten to introduce myself. My name is Remarkable Demarcus. Yes, yes, yes. Well, so tell us about yourselves. I'm sure you're lovely and fascinating people. I am the host, and it is my job to break the ice. Well, I am what you might call an advisory therapist. It doesn't pay well, but it does have its perks. I don't like to brag, but my worldly experience has led me to have insight to everything. <laughs> yes. Now, I can't tell you how to invest in the stock market, or if your horse will win at the tracks, even though I do have an understanding of basic fortune telling. However, perhaps I can shed a light on the wet paper bag of Tormel you are in. Yes, with a bit of folksy wisdom, I can solve any problem. <laughs> you don't believe me? Oh, I'll have an example for you. Yes, I have a story. My day had begun like any other. I, merely absorbing wisdom from the world like a sponge on a serious mission, and nary a care beyond the palability of my drink. That's when I received a phone call from a lovely friend of mine. A girl with a pole cried to his face and a thirst for knowledge. She was a student at the time, paying a thousand dollars for an education in professional pretense. In a later era, she would be the girl in the coffee shop you would overhear criticizing the water treatment plant, even though she is not sure what water is made of. When I answered, I discovered it was a text. The words read simply, I missed the bus, and it's cold. I have known a lot of women in my time, and I understood the intrinsic meaning of her message. I knew exactly what I had to do. I attempted at first to escalate this discussion of life's trivial annoyances. I told her I had run out of shampoo this morning, so I knew how she felt. But she saw through my clever strategy, and informed me that she really wished that there was an alternative mode of travel aside from the bus. I joked that perhaps we could put explosive collars on our city's bus drivers, and whenever someone missed the bus their heads could be exploded. She said that would be fine, and that she couldn't remember if I owed her five dollars. So, with no alternatives, I put on my jacket and went to fetch my beneficent lady friend. It's nothing but her ladylike charms that encourage men to stay in a confined space with my friend for prolonged periods. As long as we're out, I asked. Would you like to get a bite to eat? Of course, she replied. Unfortunately, I did not realize at the time how rude I was being. She had forgotten her wallet, and I would later place her in the imposition of asking me to pay for her meal. What would you like, I asked. <laughs> Anything would be fine, she assured me. How about pizza? I suggested. And with those faithful words, my lady friend fell into a fit of tears. I tried my most sinuous of rhetoric, but it was to no avail. All hope was lost, and I had toppled my good standing with my friend. Furious, she demanded that I pull over and abandon my own car to enjoy the nice weather outside. I pulled over at the park and contemplated my faults. I am very introspective. However, nothing I could think of could remedy my miserable situation, and I was about to lose hope until I stumbled across an unusual man sitting on a park bench. He asked me to sit down, and he explained that in his lifetime he'd been a lot of things, including a golf caddy, president of the United States, a vegetable vampire, an engineer, and also divorced. He said he knew a man when he was down on his luck when he saw one, because he was also God, 
and then he winked. I told him that I didn't know what to do about my lady friend. I tried so hard, but nothing seemed to be working. He told me, son, the brain is a funny thing. I know that because the word hippocampus is Latin for seahorse. Isn't it funny that the important part of your brain looks like a seahorse? But the fact is, humans are not as smart as we think. The simple truth is that we can't explain why some things make us happy or sad. We work totally on autopilot. And most of the reasons we think we have for acting in a certain way are totally made up after the fact. That is why no one in a relationship ever wins in an argument. I reflected on this and realized it was wisdom quite profound for my particular situation. I went to thank the mysterious stranger, but when I turned, he was gone. With a wistful look over my shoulder, I returned to my car. My lady friend was still in a state of mental disarray, but I leaned down, I looked her in the eye, and I asked her, would you like Mexican instead? With that, her demeanor became as light and as minty as her breath, and she thanked me with the utmost sincerity. So, there you have it. Verifiable proof that I know one half of everything. And you can trust that I have been there before, wherever it is. And life has no hurdles that I have not seen before or read about. So, by all means, consider the resources of Remarkable Demarcus available to you. My services come free, but I am fond of donations. <laughs> Till next time, my dear viewers. My day had begun like any other. I merely, I am. Um, okay, <laughs> yes. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> and with those faithful words, my lady friend. My lady. <laughs> my lady. <laughs>